everyone. I hope you are having a great day today. In today's video, we are continuing our series on organ builders with the W.W. Kimball Organ Company here at Samuel Lutheran Church in Muskegon, Michigan. I'm joined today by Annette Jersevic, who is the organist and director of music here at Samuel. Annette, welcome. Congratulations as well, because I understand that you recently won a major competition in orchestral conducting. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Thanks, Rob. This particular award, called the American Prize in Orchestral Programming, is a bit different from most conducting awards since it's not based on how a conductor looks or leads an orchestra, but instead it's based on a conductor's choice of repertoire and how it fits together, not only within a single concert, but also across an entire concert season. As the director of the Shoreline Symphony in Muskegon, Michigan, I have had the opportunity to present orchestral music to West Michigan audiences for the past six years. Our 2016-2017 season, The Four Elements, featured four concerts, earth, fire, air, and water, with pieces of music I selected to represent each element. The judges of the American Prize selected my entry of this season as the U.S. winner in the Community Orchestra Division. What an honor. Awesome. Well, congratulations. So today, as I said, we are looking at Kimball organs. The Kimball Company is a little different from our last two builders, Austin and Cassavant, in that they did not solely make pipe organs. Over the life of the company, they also made reed organs, theater organs, pianos, furniture, and during World War II, they produced aircraft parts. The company was founded by William Wallace Kimball in 1857 in Chicago. The company primarily built pianos at first, but continued to develop and produce pipe organs, and reed organs. In 1877, Kimball built a large factory dedicated to making reed organs. They continued to make these instruments until 1922, by which time they had built over 400,000 reed organs. Incidentally, if you would like to learn a little bit more about reed organs and how they differ from pipe organs, I talk more about this in my Pipe Organs of Disney World video. I'll include a link to that in the description if you'd like to check it out. So, on to Kimball organs. The company did quite well in producing pipe organs, owing in large part to the popularity of Kimball pianos. They continued to build and install organs up until 1942, by which time they had made more than 7,000 instruments. One of their more notable instruments was a rebuilding of the organ at the Mormon Tabernacle in 1901. During this time, they also built numerous theater organs, many of which are still in use today. One is currently prominently displayed at the National Music Center in Calgary, Alberta. The company went through some hard times following World War II. In 1959, it was purchased by the Jasper Corporation, which helped to revitalize the brand for a time. In 1961, Kimball began producing electronic organs, which were not well received initially due to a very poor sound quality. After a few years and advances in technology, these electronic instruments greatly improved and became very popular in homes. The Kimball Company continued to make organs until 1983 and pianos until 1996. However, they do still continue to make furniture. So now with that somewhat long-winded history out of the way, let's take a look at this instrument here. Annette, what can you tell us about this instrument? The instrument was originally built in 1939 and has been mostly unchanged since then. The instrument has three manuals with four divisions, swell, great, choir, and pedal. The original instrument had 32 stops and 20 ranks, but was updated in 1988 by the Donald Hahn Pipe Organ Service, and currently has 32 stops and 25 ranks, with a total of 1,731 pipes. When I was doing some research this week, I realized there was an aspect of the organ that I never talked about with the other instruments. Um, and that is whether or not any of the divisions are enclosed. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, an enclosed division is one that is surrounded on three sides by walls, and the fourth side is made up of large shutters that can open and close to control the volume. Both the Austin at First Presbyterian and the Cassavant at Christ Church have their swell and choir divisions enclosed. Annette, what about this instrument? This organ is a little different from those in that all of the divisions are enclosed. The choir, grate, and pedal pipes are enclosed together, and the swell pipes are enclosed separately. So then the whole instrument is enclosed, or otherwise known as under expression? Almost. 
The trumpet en chamade is not enclosed, but everything else is, and there are two swell, swell pedals to control them. Which is a lot nicer than trying to balance four swell pedals, which is no easy feat. Pun partially intended. <laughs> <laughs> so what else should we know about the instrument? Well, something worth noting is the location of the pipes. The console is up here at the front of the sanctuary, but the pipes are all the way in the back up in the balcony. Right. It's not unusual for pipes to be found in the back of the church. We've seen that both at First Pres and Christ Church with their antiphonal divisions. And it's also not uncommon for um, the entire instrument to be located in the back or for that matter in the balcony. Many European cathedrals are situated this way. Notre Dame in Paris is a prime example. Typically though, the console is in the same place and obviously that's not the case here. Does this cause any problems then, either when you're playing by yourself or uh, even more when you're accompanying a congregation? Well, there is a bit of time delay between the moment at which I strike a key or push a pedal and the moment I hear sound in response. However, the delay is tiny, and since I practice on this organ regularly, I've learned to adjust, so it's no problem. Well, that's good. In the first video in this series, the Austin we looked at was originally built in 1937, so while it's technically older than this Kimball, it's been moved and refurbished a couple of times, so it comes off as a newer instrument. With this one being so old and virtually unaltered, how well has it held up? Remarkably well, I would say. It holds its tune unless there's a change in temperature or humidity, and surprisingly, it needs less maintenance than your Austin at first press. <laughs> Obviously, it's smaller than the Austin, so there's less that can go wrong with it, right. but it's a testament how well it was built and refurbished, just how little work it needs beyond regular tuning. Now, with regard to tone quality, there is some inconsistency. In particular, the trumpet reed stop is quite strident compared to the other stops. So, in situations where I might want a trumpet sound, I frequently have to substitute an oboe or a bassoon, which doesn't have quite the power of the trumpet, so I don't get quite the same effect. Sounds like that stop might need to be revoiced uh, sometime in the future, which is a fairly common practice for older instruments, and it involves balancing out the sound of a particular stop so that it continues to work well with the instrument. Well, Annette, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today about this instrument. Do you have a website uh, where the audience can learn a little bit more about you? Yes, it's www.annettejersevic.com. Great. I will be sure to include a link of that in the description, so please be sure to go and check it out. Now, like last week, I've got a couple of short pieces so that you can hear what this instrument sounds like, and you'll also get to see this instrument up close and from the inside.
have enjoyed this little look at the Kimball Pipe Organ Company today. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break from this series for the next few weeks as I'm going to be traveling, but if there is a, another organ builder that you would like me to feature in a future video, please let me know that down in the comments. I've had a couple of suggestions of builders to look into already, so I will definitely be continuing this series in the future. Before you go, please, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe and remember to click that little notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all my latest posts. Be sure to follow me on social media and if you'd like to help support this channel, I would encourage you to consider becoming one of my Patreons. You can find links to all these sites down in the description. Thanks for watching. See you real soon.